Hi, this is Linear Algebra, section 2.6. The Antif input-output model is what we're going to be dealing with. And this deals with economics and then having a couple of different sectors working together. And then we want to see how they uh, accomplish working together. You see a lot of mergers nowadays with different companies. And it's like, well, that's beneficial to us. Well, let's see how that can be. So I'm going to take a simple two company situation where we have a battery company and a motor company. And we want to use the information to answer the questions below. And so we have a battery division. For every 100 batteries that it produces, the battery company uses three batteries internally. So what happens is that if we want to make batteries to ship out, well, we need to use them internally either for models or for you know, running, running whatever we have going on in our company, et cetera, but we use our own stuff internally. Similarly, if we need motors, for every 100 batteries produced, it uses one motor from the motor division. And then the motor division, you can read that there, it's gonna use four motors for every motor it produces, and then eight batteries. So the batteries have to come from the battery company over to the motor company based upon every 100 motors that it does produce. So we're going to make, first of all, a diagraph just to help us out with this situation. So I'm going to have the, my batteries, and then I'm going to have my motors. And then from the batteries to the batteries, if you read this again, we're going to use 3% internally. So that means that I'm going to go from batteries to batteries on 3% of what we have. And then if I go ahead on motors internally, they're going to use 4% for every motor that they use. So this is going to be motors to motors. Okay, and then we have to go from one to the other. So how does that work? Well, I'm going to go batteries to motors, and then I'm going to go motors back to batteries. So then when we transfer over, for every 100 batteries produced, I'm going to use one motor from the motor division. So what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get 1% of my battery production in motors from the motor company. And this is where people mess this up. They'd put the 0 .08 there. But up here, we're going to need a lot of batteries to go over to the motor division. And so 0 .08 of all motors produced are going to have that in batteries that we're going to need. So the diagraph kind of helps us because then we we're going to go ahead and go ahead and uh, create a matrix for this. The matrix, we're going to start with on this side, what are we moving from? And then on the top, going down, and what are we moving to? And so when we set up our matrix for this, this is going to be a two by two. And I'm going to have B and M and B and M. So from batteries to batteries, that should be pretty straightforward, 0 0.03. And then motors to motors, that's going to be 0 0.04. Okay, so think about these other two spots that I have remaining. What do I need from the motor division to go to the battery division based upon the number of batteries that I'm producing? Is that the 0 0.01 or the 0 0.08? 0 0.0. One. Okay, so that means that 1% of my batteries are going to come from the motor division and go over to the battery division. So now this one's got to be the 0 .08. What does that mean? Well, that means of the motors that I'm going to produce, 8% of that will go into my batteries. Well, I'm going to need 8 batteries for 100 that I produce. So I'm going to use the percentages, or I'm sorry, the decimal representation for each one of those things. So if I take the batteries and motors here and multiply them in this matrix, I'm going to get 0.03B plus 0.08M. This is how many batteries I'm going to be using in order to make a production of whatever number of batteries, motors I'm going to have. This right here is going to be how many motors and batteries I, I'm sorry, how many motors I have to use up depending upon how many motors and batteries that are going to be in our system. How can we accentuate this a little bit more? Well, I can say then that 
whatever our external demand is. Somebody wants to order a bunch of batteries, a bunch of motors, whatever our demand would be, and this would be for my batteries, and then overall, this is going to equal my production. So this is my production of the number of batteries that I'm going to have. This is, D is how many are wanted by the public. And then these two quantities are how many that I'm going to use inside our company to produce all these other ones. So in a similar fashion, we can do the same thing for motors and go ahead and say, okay, I want to go plus. The demand for motors is equal to my production for motors. I hope this kind of makes sense. It does get kind of unwieldy, especially when you get into three sectors, but matrices helps us sort it all out. And this is what we're going to try to achieve with that. So this C is our consumption matrix, and that's what we're going to call it, is our consumption matrix. How much are we going to use inside in order to do the things that go outside? Okay. And then we're going to try to use matrices to make this better, like I said. So what I can say then is that our external demand, so I think if you look at the equations like this, it makes a lot more sense. Our external demand is going to be equal to our production minus how much we use inside. That's all it is. So D is equal to my production minus my consumption. And the consumption is based upon how much I can, uh, how much I produce overall. Now look at what this one down here means now. What's X again? Well, X is our production. Is equal to our consumption from the inside and our demand outside. So this is kind of like internal demand. This is external demand. That's how much we're going to produce. So if my demand is equal to my production minus my internal consumption. How can I write this with matrices? And this is where the notation will get a little bit funny. But then the do, uh, demand is equal to, okay, when I use matrices, I have to use the identity matrix. And the identity matrix factored out. So what I'm doing is I'm factoring out the x. In order to do this properly with matrices, I have to put it left justified because later on what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to solve for x and when I solve for x I have to use the inverse like this. Okay, so these are some of the formulas that we're going to be using. So here's our same example again except for now we're doing specifics. I want to know we have an order for 400 batteries and then we have an order for 100 motors. We want to know how much we need to produce. Obviously, it's going to be bigger than 400 and uh, greater than 100 for the batteries and motors, respectively. And then so we, want, we need to figure out this amount. And so then how much do we need for the internal demand that will tell us then our full production? So X is our production. This is our internal demand. This is our external demand. And so here's our production in batteries and motors, our consumption matrix, and then my battery motors again, and then all I have to do is add on D to figure this out. And now in solving, uh, it's not like regular algebra. I think that you can do this with algebra pretty easily. So here I did it with matrices. I'm sorry, with algebra. And now I want to go ahead and do it with matrices. The algebra should be pretty straightforward there. But if I have this now in matrices, and I alluded this to this in the last page, so I want to factor out this X. And when I do that, I need to go left justified with my matrices and then right with the X. And so what's going to happen is that when I multiply or undo what's on the X, I need to put my inverse matrix there and I need to put it there. I need to keep left and keep left for both of those. And so when I write this out, this is going to be I minus C. This is going to be the inverse. I got to take away what I had before. And then I got my D is equal to, and then I have my undoing thing here, I minus C inverse. If I take the inverse, multiply by whatever I had, that's just going to give me the identity matrix. And I'm going to end up with 
pi there, which is just x. So right now, this would be x is equal to i minus c, the inverse of that, times d, which is what I have right here. Which is what I have right here. So let's set this up. x is equal to, and this way, this is how we solve it with the inverse matrix. You can also solve it by doing row reduction in a regular matrix as we did before, and I'll show that in a second. But we're going to have i, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. And if it's a 3 by 3 system, then you got to do i3 rather than i2. And then minus my consumption matrix. And then I need to take the inverse of all this. And then I'm going to multiply it by my demand. Well, what is our demand? Well, we said we have 400 batteries and then 100 motors. So now if I pump this into my calculator, I'm going to get 421 and 108.5. Make sure you can get that. And you can use this negative 1 as the exponent to show the inverse. That should work. So now let's check a few things. First of all, did we end up with producing more than what our external demand was? Sure. This is 400, 100. Yep, I'm a little bit more than that. Then the other question would be how much is going inside. So if you want to look at efficiencies and everything else, I'm going to have 21 batteries that stay inside and 8.5 motors that stay inside. So that would be my internal demand. So given demand, I want to find production, I got to use this formula right here. What if we flip this around a little bit? Now we know how much we can produce and then we want to know how much we can send for external demand. So we're going to send our salesmen out, salespeople out, and see how much uh, we can put out there if I know that my production levels are this. So I'm going to now use this formula where I find the demand because I know the production and I know my consumption matrix. So I should be able to figure out what this external demand is for us. So now I just set this up into my matrix and I'm going to get the production minus my internal demand, which is my consumption matrix times my overall production. Now if I solve this out with my calculator, I get 938, 374. Does it make sense that these values are less than my overall production? Well, I hope so. And then can I figure out what I used internally from this? Yes, I can either multiply those two or else I can take 1,000 minus 938 and I can take 400 minus 374 and find that out. So I can answer all types of questions. I hope I borrowed right and subtracted right for that. Okay, I hope this helps you a little bit. Uh, I did say that I was going to show you how to do this with the uh, row reduction. But that's going back to our previous example. If they ask me to not use inverse matrices to solve this, I can go back here and set up the matrix and do row reduction. So all this is is sum matrix times my x is equal to my d, which we, before we, told, we said was b. So this is very similar to ax is equal to b. So if I set this up, a is just the i minus c, so I just did the arithmetic on that. And then I closed this off, which I didn't want, I guess. So the alternative way to row reduce this and solve, and you should get the same answer as that we got before, is to set up this matrix right here, where this is i minus c, and then this is just what you want for your external demand, your d. Okay, so I hope that this helps set this up for Leon Tief. You're going to get into 3 by 3 matrices a little bit and investigate what happens in those multiple sector systems. All right, thanks. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. Bye.